Hello and welcome, my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. Today, we're going to be talking about brushes. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. One of the most important things in an and artist's arsenal or toolbox is a brush. The other most important thing, besides on the canvas or anything you've got to paint on, is paints. That's something we're going to be looking at in another lesson. But let's talk about brushes today. So without further ado, let's get to the table of explanation. Over you. Right, now brushes. We're going to have a look at the table of explanation in one second. Now we need to know, this. as a beginner, it is, it is frustrating because what brushes do you need? There's squares, rounds, ovals, script liners, um, detail brushes, there's the short flats, there's sword brushes, there's deer foot brushes, <laughs> there's man-made synthetic, a mixture of both, there's, um, the, the, there's bristle brushes, whoa, the head explodes, it really does. But what I'm trying to do here today is not just show you how to take care of your brushes, but I also want to show and explain very quickly in, in an easy way, if I can, I don't think there's an easy way, but we'll we'll get there in one second. We certainly will. And I want to, just want to take you through the brushes and how to look after them. And I think that's all about all I can do in this particular lesson. And then we're going to look at paints. That's another thing that we need to be careful of is paints, because that is just a minefield. Anyway, let's get down to the table of explanation. So as we said, let's have a look at the table of explanation now. As you can see, I've got an array of brushes in front of me. Just ignore all this stuff for one moment. So what do I, what do I mean? Well, that is a short flat. There you go. That's a short flat. This is a small one. Yes, a little itty ditty one, but you can get them as big as that and even bigger. Yes, some of the bigger brushes are really frightening. But um, I try to keep them under lock and key, and I don't let them out very often. So um, yeah, short flats. They are squares or short flats. There we go. So if you hear me saying on the lesson about squares or short flats, those are the ones I'm talking about. Okay, let's put them there. Um, we've got detail brushes again. Um, these come in various sizes. This happens to be a number twelve. I got itty ditty ditty ones here. And um, there you go, I, I didn't get one out, so I didn't prepare very well. <laughs> but they're itty ditty ditty ones, look. They're very, very small and they go really fine to zero, zero, or zero, one, zero, as fine as you want them, really. I can get them down to one here. Mm. So, um, and these, are, these can go big as well, so I keep them in the cage also, and they can get really big and chunky. But it all depends what type of painting you actually want to do. And um, they normally are. And a, a standard size but they come to a nice sharp point so when they wet you can actually get some lovely detail painting uh, some detail effects some detail effects I don't know. yes we can okay so they they called detail brushes again that's another short flat but that is in a different type of um, bristle which we will talk about in one second what have we got we got rounds now these are what they call a round brush why because you can see they actually look round. So it's like a big detail brush with the end chopped off. So you haven't got a point on that one. So it's flat. So basically it's a big detail brush like that, but with no point on it. So it's called a round. And that happens to be a bristle brush. Again, we'll talk about that in one second. Then we got ovals. Ovals are, a, a basically, um, a detail brush has been squished, flat like that. So you imagine that being squeezed and that's the type of shape you'd get. So if we if we have a look at this this bristle now, if I squeeze it in my hand, it'll go like that. See? So that's all it is. It's a squished detail brush. And they come in different sizes as well. And um and a square is basically a detail brush that's been squished with the edge chopped off. <laughs> that's all it is. Yes. Simple, isn't it? So that's that's what they call a filbert. I don't know why they call them a filbert, but that just happens to be their name. I don't, I don't particularly mind what they call them. They could call me, they call Charlie, but it's, it just happens to be called Phil. So there we are. There's a little filbert brush, and again, they all come in different sizes as well. They're good for rocks and things like that. And um, and then we got a fan brush. Yes, there we are. So that's basically a short flat. It's been squished again. So if you squish, if you squish a short flat really, really well. 
it'll fan out like that. See? Can you see? Can you see? There you are. So if you hit that ferrule, that's the metal part, with a hammer, you can actually splay that into a fan brush. There you go, like that. And I've been known to do that, yes. So you can play around with these brushes. So if you've got some really cheap brushes and you want to make a square into a into a, a, a fan brush, then you can do that. Yeah, I'll make sure you how to do that one day. Um, and there we are. So fan brushes, they're good uh, for, for blending, they're good for blending, and they're good for the trees, and they're good for grasses, they're good for um, um, foliage. They got a, a vast amount of uses, but you can paint clouds with them. So they they are a really, really got a vast amount of use. Okay, now let's go. Oh, I've got a rake brush there. Let's talk about the speciality brushes. This is a rake brush. Now I don't know if you could see let the cameras focus on that. That a percentage of those hairs are shorter than the others. And if you've seen me doing the um, wolf painting in the Halloween or the deer painting or any fur painting I do, I tend to use one of these for the fur because it makes little lines, it looks like fur. And I don't know, there must be about 30 individual hairs sticking out of that brush there. So I can have 30 individual little lines instead of playing around with a small detail brush. So that's what that is. It's a rake brush, good for grasses as well. And the other um, speciality brush is, I'm just wet in this, is called a sword brush. Well, that's what I know it as, a sword brush. And it comes to a nice sharp point like that. And that's good, again, for foliage, um, for grasses, for tree tree stumps, and, or tree trunks, I should say. Um, and you, you can play around with that. That's a really nice, soft brush, and it keeps its shape. You can mould it into a certain pattern if you wanted to. There we are, we reverse, reverse it. So I can get a nice sharp point right on the end. And there you are, you can see that I'll put it just off my face if you can see that it comes to a nice sharp point so you can mold these to different shapes and um, the one I didn't discuss really was a uh, script liner brush and um, that's really a long pointed brush and there's one there I'll put that there because that, that could be quite useful in a second and that is basically a long long pointed brush it's, it's a detail brush that's this, this tall. <laughs> it's been stretched. No, it's, it's a very long bristled brush and it comes to a very sharp point and you'll see me using that on um, branches and grasses and things like that. So um, if I say a script liner or um, a script liner or... Um, or um... <laughs> Help! Somebody help me, I've forgotten it. A script liner, there we are. We call it a script liner, doesn't matter, I've forgotten. But there you go. So that's it, really. You don't need to worry too much about brushes. You just need a selection of brushes. So I would suggest you get, say, a couple of squares, which are those, okay, or short flats. Um, you want a selection of, 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 of detail brushes from different sizes from the very small to whatever size you, you're comfortable with. Some um, filbert brushes, which are those ones. You can get them in various sizes. Um, you might want to get uh, a fan brush or make your own fan brush. And you might want to get a blending brush. Um, this is a very, very soft brush called, this is called a deer foot. It's a very, very soft brush. And that can be used for, for blending in clouds. It can be used for putting in mist um, it, it can be used for a vast amount of different things, fluffing up clouds and just basically blending. That's what I use those for. So let's look at the, let's look at the different types of brushes. What what makes up the brush? Let's have a look at what makes up the brush. Right. Firstly, we got a handle. That's 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 quite easy to understand because we hold it. Now it depends on the the brush pattern where you actually hold your brush you, you can hold your brush down there or you can hold your brush up there you can hold your brush in the middle some people tend to use it like a pen but you can use um, the brush in many different ways you can hold it like that you can hold it whoops you can hold it like that or you can even drop it um, so all that is going to give you different effects so what I suggest you do is practice with that and I will make a video on showing you what type of patterns you can get with these brushes but we move then down into the metal part 
um, on the and obviously on these they're black and on these they're silver um, and that is called a ferrule now in there that is where the the metal part holds the the bristles which is connected to the handle obviously and they glued in place now these bristles um, are in there and they've they've been stuck together with glue and then pressed there very gently just to hold the bristles in place now that is important the reason i mention in that is because when we come to cleaning our brushes you will understand what i mean so that is called a ferrule handle ferrule bristles that's it that's all the brushes handle ferrule and bristles and um, very important um, that you remember position of your hand on the handle gives you different patterns um, you've got to look after the ferrule there's a reason I'll come on to in one second and we've got to maintain our bristles because if we don't look after our bristles we're not going to have very nice brushes and we're going to start kicking ourselves because some of these are very expensive okay now let's have a look we got these are natural bristle brushes normally like a hog hair or something like that we don't want to worry about the actual where they come from it could be a badger hair it could be deer hair it could be um like i said it, it could be a, a bristle brush a hog brush and a lot of these different um natural types of hair or bristle um take a little bit of care and and, and, and you've got to look after the natural ones because they get damaged quite easily yes and they can absorb a lot of moisture and if you if you leave a lot of these in water for any length of time they will get a bit funky and go all all they'll just splay out of all proportion and uh, not a bad thing in some cases sometimes i leave natural bristle brushes soak specifically to get them to just spray out like this because if i can get them to do that i can use them for um, trees and things now um so you you need to prepare you, you need to, to, to basically look after them in a, in a different way and we'll be covering that in one second um so you've got um this is like a man-made bristle basically it's it's a it's a, it's it's like a um i don't know what exactly what it is but i think it's like a, a um like a hessian type of bristle um it's a not it's, it's it's a natural fiber actually it's a fiber brush that's the word i was looking for this is more of a fiber than the bristle so you can get bris um, brushes with has got um natural fibers basically there we are they're natural fiber brushes very complicated to try and keep it simple is it's hard sometimes yes anyway so you've got that type the other thing you've got is this is like like i said this again this is going on to um this is a very very soft this is pony hair this comes off the mane of a horse this particular one it's really nice nice and soft um, again that's that's a natural hairbrush um, this is again this is um, a deer hair um, this comes off a deer I think or a stag but it could be a deer because it was expensive <laughs> so it's a deer brush <laughs> so yeah that's a very nice soft brush so they need special care so you've got them now you can actually buy brushes which is a blend between um, a man-made fiber like a synthetic brush synthetic fibers these are these these white ones are talon brushes they, they they they're like a nylon brush a nylon base so um monofilament type of thing yeah they're nylon um you can get them you can get a mixture of this with the natural so that's a different type of brush um the saw brush is a natural hair brush i'm not too sure what what hair that is um, but then you've got the um, the man-made synthetic ones again, um, like that one there, and and they are normally used for um, acrylics. Uh, you'll see there's brushes designed for watercolors, like sables, and uh, they are very soft brush, not very good for acrylics in many ways because they 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 get a bit they're a bit soft. You need something with a little that's a little bit more robust. Um, bristle brushes tend to be used a lot in oil paints because they take a bashing because the acrylic um, and oil paint is quite heavy hard on the brush hard on the canvas so you need something really stiff for that unless you're going into glazings and stuff um, but that's what they normally use for but you can use any brush with acrylics because it's a water-based paint you can use any brush but be careful try to avoid the water brushes watercolor brushes if you can unless you're going to use acrylics as a watercolor 
um, try to avoid them because they tend to be a little bit soft. So you need something like a man-made fiber or a natural hairbrush or even a bristle brush. But I would, I would tend to err on the side of caution and say, go for the man-made. If it says good for acrylics and oils, that's the type of brush that you want. So without confusing the issue, that's all I need to say about brushes, really. There's not much more I can say. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk